Whoa! Always amazed whenever technology can work. Thank you for watching, and my name is the one and only Hobo Tom. And I have to get back because there's a little reverb there. I just forget, I've kind of moved my computer around. The cat likes to jump on it every so often. So I'm trying to figure things out spacing wise. So, hello! Welcome again to the Hobo! And I guess for right now is. is is something show. My name is the one and only Hobo Tom. And I do plan on this year, my New Year's resolution is doing a lot more programming, a lot more live stream. Hopefully, if time and money permit, some more non WWE wrestling as well. So, a whole bunch of stuff going on in the world out there of pro wrestling. Um, and I'll get to that as appropriate, but this is Monday night, and it's a special Monday night, so have a very quick tribute to Martin Luther King Jr., or is Martin Luther King For I have a dream! Even the hobo can have a dream. And that is the WWE will put on good wrestling. And that is my dream. And actually, it's been getting a lot better ever since either the McMahons have taken control or they have something different going on. Because Monday Night Raw, SmackDown was always good. Monday Night Raw is getting better. It's getting very sneakily better. So let's talk a little bit about some Monday, Monday Night Raw. Because it is a semi-holiday, I have my nice, yummy, delicious all here. here. Ooh, here. Ah, okay. Especially the good stuff. So again, Raw opens up. Again, it's Martin Luther King Day, so they do open up with a Martin Luther King tribute. It was okay. It just kind of showed... Uh, his great, his his tombstone, and you heard the ten bell salute. Nothing special. It was good. It was good. It was good, and it was tasteful. So again, saying something's good and tasteful coming from the WWE is pretty rare. So therefore, that's a good thing. And it shows up. Uh, starts with Brock Lesnar coming up to the ring. Of course, you have Paul Heyman. My name is Paul Heyman. Again, classic. Then shows up. Of course, Finn shows up, Braun shows up. Braun mentioned how it costs him $100,000 and he can rip Brock Lesnar just as easily apart as he can a cheap limo. And then Red Balor shows up. And he reiterates that there's the Balor crowd out there. So again, that's always good. And it starts off with the first match of the night. So the shock was Finn Balor versus Braun Strowman. Yeah, and this is one thing that the WWE does a lot. They do like to have contrasting styles. I mean, you have a smaller, much faster David wrestler in Finn Balor versus the big, brute, hulkish Braun Strowman, the Goliath. And it was pretty good. Finn started to wrestle smart. He, he, he was smart because he went at a much faster pace, um, kept things moving. He, the announcers always say, well, he keeps a distance. And he did do that until he did something dumb. He went for a double leg takedown. He got close to Braun. Should not be doing that. Um, of course, with that, Braun's going to be much stronger. Starts to just pummel on him. Throws Finn into Brock Lesnar, who's just there wandering around ringside. So that was pretty interesting. Brock kind of gets involved. Again, if you're thrown onto Brock Lesnar, the referee did give a lot of leeway as far as the outside stuff goes. Um, inside the ring, that's a whole different area. And again, Finn, when he's smart, when he has the distance, he's, he's, he gets the upper hand. When he closes that gap, uh -uh. he did catch Braun Strowman when he was going to do the run around and, and just run him over thing. Caught him with a sling blade, got him in the corner, did the drop kick. 
the coup de grace, Braun Strowman. But he did not win. Uh uh, baby. This is the opening match, sweetheart. We can't tease this. We have to show Brock Lesnar, baby. Or Brock Lesnar, baby. Being strong and bringing Brock Lesnar. Just decides to pick up Finn, poor Finn Balor, and F5 him. That's why we got a death to finish, baby. But this is WWE, sweetheart. Someone has to win. And guess who won? With Big Red Balor. Because, of course, Brock Lesnar destroyed Finn. So, therefore, he was helping Braun. And, really, this was a fun match, even with all the interference. This is a good cheeseburger match. Which is always a good way to start off Raw. Um, then you have Lashley, a celebration of Lashley, again, who just won the Intercontinental Championship. Starts doing his pose down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, get, gets the belt put on him by Leo Rush. Then all of a sudden, Apollo Crew shows up. And it starts off, Apollo Crews starts to challenging him. Leo Rush had a great line in um, I forget what it was, but had the effect of saying, you know what, who are you? You haven't won championships. Something else has eluded you. Championships. Oh, burn on that. So that was pretty fun. Leo Rush is getting a lot better now that he doesn't have Vince in his ear. Tell him to go, Lashley, Lashley. Now that Leo Rush is a little bit more organic, he's actually a really good, really good talker. Really good mouthpiece for... Or Leo, yeah, Leo Rush, is, Leo Rush is a good mouthpiece, really, for Bobby Lashley. And we have the opening pose off and... I guess Cruz won the pose off. He's the face. Crowd, of course, is going to cheer him. Um, both men are huge. They have muscles upon muscles and muscles I didn't even know you could have. I guess. Maybe. Peaks upon peaks. And he, even Renee. <laughs> I said one simple word that summed it up. Vascularity. Oh, Renee. You should not be looking at other men's vascularity. You should be looking at your honey bear's vascularity. That was still a great line from last night. So yeah, this was a fun match. The fact that these two are similar power, again, both power wrestlers, uh, Paul Cruz being much more athletic, I have no idea how you managed to even try to pick up Lashley twice. He got it somewhat the second time. He gets major props for that. Though. That's a tough. That's tough. Of course, he can still do his uh, backflips and everything. Lashley is much more powerful, much more methodical power wrestler. So again, it's a little bit different style, even though both really are considered power wrestlers, I guess. And both of them are freaking jacked. I mean, just strength for strength. It's the amount of muscle in that room is amazing. I think they had more muscle in their legs than poor Leo Rush does in his whole body. But Leo Rush got involved. Again, he gets involved suddenly where he doesn't cost his man the match, but just enough to get the, dr the distraction. Again, he, he's, he's quick and agile and does Matrix-like stuff. Good. Uh, eventually, Lash Lashley did nail the spear on Cruz. <laughs> it looked vicious. I think Cruz had a Paul, had a Leo Rush in a gorilla press. Lashley just got him unprotected with that spear. That looked rough. That looked real. That looked good. Again, this was a fun match. Um, again, it's a good cheeseburger match. I mean, this time at Raw, we would have had 
only only had that one match in a speaking segment that kind of put the crowd to sleep. Because the next match was probably the best match of the night. And I'll get to why. Especially when I get to the main event. <sighs> So next we had Seth, Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre. Both are amazing workers in the ring. I mean, Drew, just that pure strength. He can do like those upside down setups like it's with one leg holding him. That's amazing. That hurts the leg muscle too. Um, Seth, again, much quicker, much more agile, more prone to high flying. We're going to see how that fares for the Royal Rumble, though, folks. So again, Drew's just powerful. And that Scottish headbutt. Ooh. I don't know who'd win in a headbutt competition anymore. I don't know if a Scottish person would or a Samoan would. Samoans are known for their headbutts. And then that Alabama slam onto the out at the outside of the ring. Oh, that sounded amazing. Again, just really good classic stuff out of those two. I mean, it was, it was I was amazed that Seth hit the Falcon Arrow on, again, the big guy. The smart thing is, Seth did the smart thing. A lot of wrestlers don't do this. When they go for that kind of schoolboy, that kind of pin, he, you could tell Seth put his whole body weight on his legs and kind of held him. Oh, my cell phone just went off. I'll get that in a moment, maybe. One o'clock. Oh, I know who's texting. Twisted Pixie. We're going to see her come St. Valentine's Day. And I'll talk about that much later, probably. Right after the Royal Rumble. Let's get back to this. Um, so again, this was really a good match. Again, he put all his weight on him. This is a good turf and turf match. And I forget the last time Raw had this many surf and surf matches on in a row. It's not every match. Not every match. Listen, not every match has to be a surf and surf match. As long as there's one or two on, on each show, I'm pretty happy. And if everything else is pretty good and makes sense, that's a good show. Because there's a sip of beer, too. Oh, here. Let me go check. Everything's okay? Oh, shoot. Well, I guess that saves me. I have to cancel for tomorrow. I'm sorry, my chihuahua broke his dew claw. I have to yell back. Uh, oh, that was nasty. Sorry. Um, well, let's see here. Tomorrow I fix some really these antibiotics. Put special dress. So I'm very okay. I'll I'll I'll, I'll send the replies soon. What was it fifty five? See here. Oh yes. Everyone gets to watch me text use the, the magic of cell phones. Oh, I hope. No, that's O. Hope. Everything goes okay. Tomorrow. We will. We will. Yeah. Together. Sometime. Soon again. 
comma, I have goodies for you. Hehe, <laughs> women like goodies. I do have goodies for you. See your um Ooh, emojis. I need a macho man emoji. Let's see here. Sad face. O face. Doctor face. Crying, crying, sad. Puppy dog face. Puppy. There we go. And who goodies. Everyone likes goodies. There are some goodies here. And that doesn't look like a goodie. Doesn't look like the one I got her. Maybe that. Uh, let's see. It's so tough. It's so difficult. I don't even know what the heck that is. It's like some funky mushroom thing. I don't know. That's good enough for now. Too much free time. I have to get back to work. Get back to work. Or you're fired. You fat ugly hobo. You lazy piece of garbage. Get back to work. Oh yeah, somewhere in this. It was a promo. It had the revival. Hashtag. Forever the revival. I think that F means something else. Where is it? Oh, yeah. They're talking to Vince McMahon. They somehow convinced Kurt Hawkins to be the guest referee. Here's a man that has zero win. So maybe it's maybe the revival will be going to AEW. All Elite, All Elite Wrestling. Maybe they're going to bring Kurt Hawkins along for the ride. Sasha Banks said she might want to go. The way Sasha Banks works in WWE, she probably should go. Just to work on her stuff. Someone other than Bailey, because some of that stuff she does is rough. Ah, there we go. Then we have a Dean Ambrose in the bowels of the arena somewhere. You know what? I, I should see if I can get text messages that sound like the X Men theme. The old school X Men theme, because mine somewhat does. And YouTube, every relax on the theme, you can actually see me sing it. No more copyrights and stuff that, no, questionable stuff. Then the next match, this is where it, this is where Raw kind of got long again. Um, it was a Lucha House Party versus Pinder Mahal and the Singh Brothers. For the most part, this was actually pretty fun. One, it was different. Two, you had a true six-man on six-man. It wasn't two on three. It wasn't one on three. It wasn't two guys and someone else or, or one guy and someone else or there three strangers. So it was good. Um, the Lucha House Party. When they do the, their tag team work, they are crisp at it. They're good. They do amazing stuff. They stand on, um, who was it? Callisto was on Lindsay Dorado's shoulders? Or Grand Member? Yeah, I want to say Lindsay Dorado. Because he is the, the, the on his mask, I think. And just kind of like fell onto one of the Singh brothers. Singh brothers should act more like the Desi hit squad from Impact. That's not saying much. I haven't seen Impact much. I have to find if the Pursuit channel is online or if it's free. I don't know. Again, this is, this is good. Um, this really highlighted really Lucha House Party and General Mahal. 
the things were just there to get beat up and to put people in rest holds to go through commercials, I guess. So it wasn't bad. It was just short. And you kind of knew the Lucha House it was going over. The things aren't there to get a win. So, I'll, so that was a ham sandwich, I'll be honest. It was a ham sandwich match. It was okay. I can't complain about it. I can't complain much about it. Um, here. There we go. How to do that quick. I think my computer likes to do things in like 20 minute intervals. So every 20 minutes I have to kind of remake a new video. Yes, you're getting to see the inner workings of the hobo's office. Yes! Then we have the next match. It was Elias versus Baron Corbin again. This is getting old. I mean, I understand Vince McMahon calling people hillbillies on KC. Elias doesn't have to do that. But Corey Graves still does not like Elias, though. Uh, Corey Graves, again, he had a, there were some good lines. Oh, one? In the Lucha House Party match, Renee doubts Corey Graves' journalistic ability or his journalistic Im impartiality. I don't know. Corey Graves and Renee, this seems a little touchy now. It may be, hey, it may be created that way. Something says it's not, though. Because, again, um, Renee says something about how, how good Elias can play the guitar. And he, he himself can sell Phoenix, Phoenix Arena. Uh, I think some, or just, it was something like that. Something to that effect. And then Graves said that Elias is going to stand outside with his guitar, play his guitar and pan handle for, for coins. He's going to become a hobo. I well, remember, at one time he was El Vagabundo. Again, there's still one and only Hobo Tom. I don't bomb money. That's the bums. I don't like them. I'm a hobo. I work for a living. I collect my aluminum. I don't ask for handouts. Boo bums. So again, this is okay. Um. Really a back and forth for a while. Yeah, it's a big guy. Versus big guy match. It kind of dragged and it's just getting old. We're having so much of this. I mean, it's not to say that the two wrestlers... It's not, it's not to say that the wrestling was bad. It's just they've done this week. After week. After week. After week. After week, after week, then to the Rumble, and then probably after the Rumble, a couple of weeks after the Rumble. So it's just getting all this is kind of ham sandwich. So again, nothing really spectacular. And then there was a moment of bliss. This is okay. This is... Alexa's good on the mic. But in only certain capacities. She still has probably the worst promo ever. But she did. The this is your life, Bailey. Every so often, she also does really things. I don't know if this is what she's been giving or if this is what she's collaborating with. It's not good. Ooh, then I'll have... I should... Oh, I'm sorry. I got distracted for a moment. That would be good, though. Really? Yeah, I'll think of that later when the editing process takes place. Um, it was okay. <laughs> the, 
The thing I like about this, Nikki Cross. <laughs> she just goes bonkers. <laughs> Nikki goes Nikki. And starts just like jumping on everyone and trying to put them to sleep. It was her versus Nia Jax on stage. And then she jumped on Ruby Riot. And then she jumped on else. Oh! Also, and I'll have to a little for this, I guess, because guys, guess what? It's a very sad day for all men out there. Nikki Cross got married. So again, I'd like to wish Nikki Cross and Killian Dane, her husband, Nikki Dane? I don't know what his real name is. I know I think her real name is actually Nikki Glenn Cross. But again, best wishes, congratulations, and I wish you every happiness. So, hooray! But all of a sudden, the world got a little bit. Just when I had my hopes and dreams. Uh -uh. Get out of here, you hobo. Hobo, Tom. In the next match, you have the Ascension versus Heavy Machinery. And this lifted my spirits. Because anytime you get to see a Heavy Machinery match, you better go see it. Because Otis Dozovich, he just does not do the worm, he does the caterpillar. Oh, wait. That's a type of heavy machinery. Did he do that on purpose? I think that he did. But again, that was actually really fun. I can't complain about any heavy machinery match. It honestly should have been against some jobbers, not the Ascension. That's my one qualm. Um, if you've ever seen a heavy machinery squash match, this was a heavy machinery squash match. So therefore, it's going to get a ham sandwich. The next match, we're going to have the Revival versus Gable and Rude. With Kurt Hawkins as a special guest referee. And this was pretty good. Um, with all this, we've had a lot of tag team matches. I know the one thing, the Revival, kind of gave WWE this ultimatum. And I'm not going to go through the whole statement, but one of the things they did ask, the Revival did ask for the release from WWE. The WWE said no. And the reason why they wanted the release they didn't like the direction of the ta of the entire tag team division. They didn't say we didn't like our direction. We want to be they 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 went the more selfless route, saying you know what, the whole tag team division here in Raw, it's blah. Like, are you gonna let us wrestle? Or I mean, if this is what we're being given to work with, I'm sure. Listen, I'm sure even the Ascension are good wrestlers. They're more company men. I think Dash Wilder, I think, was in Pro Wrestling Gorilla for a while. And so was Scott Dawson. But they were in they were in they were individual indie indie wrestlers before they came to WWE. I wanna say the Ascension is more of the homegrown talent. At the center that here in Orlando. So again, it was at least they did so with purpose, and they didn't put themselves in the forefront. They just said, "Hey, what you're doing with the division is is lousy, and that's us." Ascension, um, Gable, Rude. I mean, Rude and Gable weren't even on TV for a week. And it just didn't highlight anything the tag team could do. I just 
like the same thing the whole uh, a woman's thing to go on before they had the room with the woman's evolution and it's just and what they said made sense though I mean they did it in a way they didn't kind of push themselves it's like hey I'm sure everyone wants to be champ and, and, and some people are, I'm sure are just just happy to be there but they just want a, a better direction they just want some direction and again, this card is really tag team heavy, so that begs the question. If someone in WWE management listened to them and said, hey, they make sense. They're not asking for the world. They're saying, hey, just feature the tag team division. They can do it for three hours. But they really did it during this show. Um, so again, you have the Revival versus Gable and Rude. Kurt, Rockin, Kurt Hawkins is a special guest guest referee. And this was a really amazing technical match. If you want to see good technical wrestling, watch this match. That's not saying Gable. Gable can go off the top. Um, the Revival is not known for their, their high-risk things, high-risk moves. Every so often, Rude goes off the top rope. It's rare. It's not that frequent. So when they do do it, it's not like, oh, we're going to watch flippy, flippy, flippy stuff. We're like, whoa. Again, that was good, though. I mean, Gable can fly. Um, Hawkins did catch the revival cheating, though. And I'll give credit to Kurt Hawkins. He's actually a pretty good, pretty observant ref, more so than some other referees in WWE. And notice that they were cheating a lot. They were trying to cheat the win. And when they did that, he's like, no, we're stopping the count. You can't do that. Let go of the tights. Get your feet on the rope. You have your partner holding them down the other guy. Uh -uh, not on my watch. You get the finger wag of shame. And eventually, <clears throat> I think Gable did roll up Dawson because he was complaining a lot. And Gable and Rude won the match. And it was, for the most part, a really fun match. This was a good, this was a good solid cheeseburger match. But then the Revival were not happy. They decided to beat up Kurt Hawkins. And lo and behold, Zack Ryder, another person, who might just be headed off to all elite all elite wrestling? I want to say he was dating. I think Emma. I think. I know she's on the indie scene, so it makes sense for him to go on the indie scene. So right now in this match, you have four people that you might not see again in the WWE. Who knows what's going to happen? We will have the revision of the new Hype Bros. And this leads us to the main event. Again, a very heavy tag team focused TV show this time. You have Ronda Rousey and Natalia Nightheart versus uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey. And Ronda gives a promo, and it's an okay promo I think she, the one thing she needs to work on a little bit more is her delivery because I think this time she was given just bullet points to make and had to think of things to say independent from a script and she hasn't gotten to that particular skill point yet. Which is very tough to do. Think of good things off the cuff. I mean, the best at it was the Macho Man and Ric Flair. You could just tell the Macho Man, Macho Man, you have to just talk about your match upcoming with the Repo Man. Ooh, yeah! The Repo Man! He thought he could be sneaky, yeah! Sneak into my ring corner and take my hat! Not gonna happen! I'm gonna smack the repo man when I see him! I'm gonna repossess him! 
Yeah, how about that news, Eugene? Well, I don't, I don't care, it doesn't matter because I'm the best in the cream of the crop, yeah. The space is a place and the repo man invaded my space. Therefore, it's not good. I get slapped. But the little weasel he is. Oh, yeah! Of course. That's classic macho man there. And Ric Flair can do the same thing. Ric Flair just talked about your match. Woo! I'll tell you what. I'm going against the repo man. Woo! He's not going to get near my level. Woo! Because I'm high styling. Woo! Profile. Woo! Up all night. Woo! I pay every single dollar for my Gucci leather shoes. Woo! And none of you fat, ugly slobs in the audience could even come near to the quality of this Gucci suit. Woo! Because all of your ladies, woo! They're ugly. Woo! So again, he could just, again, he had that natural ability. Cat's really staring at me. She's like, what are you drinking? Not a beer, is it? Something worse than that. But again, Rousey's not at that point yet. Um, so it was an okay match. I'm back on the mic. She's not that great on the mic either. Um, Rousey just looks like she wants to, to get after someone. She's like, okay, this 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 wrestling referee stuff is is okay. I just want to punch someone. Um, Natalia's sad because Natalia just seemed there to be beat up and to eat the loss. Um, Banks get on the Rope and did her little butt wiggle. Ooh, butt wiggle. A little juicy butt wiggle by her. Um, there were um, a trade of submissions. Again, kind of classic match between everyone. Trading submissions, the partner would come in and break it up. Uh, eventually, Natalia does get caught in the bank statement. And I'll tell you what, there was a weird... Leg spot. I don't know exactly what they were trying to do, but I think Bailey's come down with the bankitis because Sasha Banks. I mean, hey, the stuff she does is still really good. There's always that one. She's almost guaranteed that one real ugly botchy spot in all of her matches. And you almost know it's coming. It's once she gets in the ring. There's always that one spot that it, it just doesn't look smooth. It doesn't flow. It doesn't make sense. It's Sometimes it just looks wrong. Like she just like fell off the top rope. Just really cringeworthy. I know she had a couple moments. I think when she was against Charlotte. She did have a couple botches. And she just landed on her neck funny. The neck is not something you want to mess with. Do not mess with the neck. Um, again, eventually Natty taps out to the bank uh, bank statement. Um, it sets up a shouting match between Ronda Rousey and Sasha Banks. And that's how, that's how Monday Night Raw ended. Oh, and that match, it was, it was a cheeseburger match. And it wasn't anything great. It wasn't horrific. Or it didn't have the the real potential to be horrific. It was good. It was good and it served a purpose. It was a little bit better than, than, the, than the cheeseburger. Than a ham. But it is what it was. Um, so some very quick programming notes. Again, Tuesday I'll be doing my normal... Tuesday Night Smackdown, because I'm finally getting over my head cold. Feeling much better. Thursday night, I'm going to do both my predictions for the takeover, for the NXT TakeOver. And I'm working Saturday night, so I can't do anything about that. And the Royal Rumble. I'm not going to guess all the entrants. I'll probably say who's special might show up. Some call up. 
and maybe I'll predict the winner. I'll predict probably two winners. Who, who I want to win, who I actually think is going to win. Both the men's and women's men have the normal predictions. And let's see. I think that's going to be it for the week. It'll just be the normal Monday, Tuesday. And then the next special show will be my all my tribute to Valentine's Day. That show will go out for all the ladies. And I'll probably get to a wrestling match. Might get to a midget wrestling match with Twisted Pixie. And you can check check that out on her Facebook or my YouTube. Maybe. And I will also do, I think that's, and I do want to get to, if I don't get to the midgets, I'm not working. I do want to see NXT in Sanford and hopefully Daytona, NXT when they come back here to Daytona Beach. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And you guys will see me tomorrow. And happy Martin Luther King Day, everyone. Bye.